everyone knows Family Guy can be a bit edgy, and at times, even tasteless. All right, time to make all those popular kids pay for ignoring me. But what happens when the show pushes boundaries a little too far? Well, they usually get some form of censorship, and if that's not enough, an episode can get outright banned. So today, we'll be covering episodes of Family Guy that got banned or censored for differing reasons. Can you find where I'm hiding in this video? We start the episode off with a musical from Stewie's classmates about a real-life woman named Terry Schiavo, who was put into a vegetative state after sustaining a brain injury. What a lively little bugger! Maybe we should just unplug her. But when it's Stewie's time to shine, things don't quite go as planned. <laughs> Look at Stewie, what a baby! While filming the play, Peter catches Richard Dreyfus at the event and begins filming him instead. We cut to the Griffin household, where we get our first taste of censorship of the episode, which I believe was just cut out for time constraints. So, had a little trouble up there on stage, huh? What do you mean? I mean, crying and wetting yourself? <laughs> you look ridiculous. You know what? I'm gonna buy a cake when you're dead. In comes Peter, who excitedly changes the channel to TMZ, where it seems he got more footage of the celeb. Oh, what, you too big and famous to walk over to that corner drugstore and pick up a pen and paper and possibly some other groceries I need and come back and sign several things for me? You're a jerk! And obviously, since this is Peter Griffin we're talking about here, he believes he's now a part of the paparazzi and begins to film every and anybody. <laughs> he gets Tom Tucker, Mayor Adam West, and a floating Rubik's Cube who's the star of our next bit of censorship. Oh, fuck it! Finally, Peter runs into Ollie Williams, who obviously doesn't want to be filmed. After being pestered by Peter and mistaken as Will Smith and Bernie Mac, Ollie punches Peter in the face and breaks his camera too. It turns out, Ollie also broke Peter's glasses, which forces him to wear contacts. It's kind of hard to even tell, but yes, that's Peter with no glasses. Well, if you didn't notice that at first, Peter's boss Angela definitely did, as she becomes instantly infatuated with him by his new look. She becomes so smitten by Peter that she even fantasizes about him. Shortly after this, she even grabs him by the ass. Not a good look, Angela. Following this, Peter begins venting the assault to Lois, who seems unfazed by the situation and tells him men can't be essayed. Back on the job, Peter's predator ramps up these assaults by having him wear skimpy clothing and rubbing cold sodas on his body. He even finds a mysterious silent hill hole. Oh, oh God, I really hope there's a hungry horse back there. Back at home, Lois answers the phone, and on the other end, you guessed it, Peter's predator Angela. He begs her to hang up, but Lois goes into detail on how much Peter is enjoying the whole thing. <laughs> He's writing your name in the shower door fog with his penis. Give me that. After Peter snatches the phone from Lois, Angela tells him he wants to hear him breathe heavily over the phone. Though, Peter has other ideas. Cal, I'm almost there. Oh, your breath is filling me up. Your breath and this squash racket. We jump to the clam, where Peter vents to his buddies about the assaults, and Joe chimes in with a story of his own on the matter. You can't do anything, Peter. These days, women have all the power in the workplace. You know, I never told you guys this, but my police captain is a woman. One day she wheeled me into her office and then made me have sex with her. It was awful. Oh my god, I must have shot you for life. No, I was into it. It was just awful sex. It was like trying to get a deflated balloon into a... Uh, well, I guess a normal vagina. It was pretty bad. Luckily, his friends aren't as cold as Lois, and Quagmire devises a plan to put a stop to the chaos. Yep, the plan is for Mr. Giggity himself to have sex with Angela while hiding in Peter's clothing. Unfortunately, as soon as Quagmire catches a good look at Angela, he wants nothing to do with her and tries desperately to escape from Peter. Though I find this to be a bit unlikely because Quagmire has definitely banged some questionable people. Peter, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. Deal's off. Deal's off. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I'm gonna spread my legs and yours will pop through. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Though the plan has been foiled, Angela still wants a piece of Peter's Peter. But after he refused her once more, Angela uses her power and fires Peter from his job. Luckily, he escapes to the clam where, unluckily, everyone there laughs about his situation. He glances up at the TV, where he gets some inspiration to put his foot down and finally fight back. Horace the bartender hesitates at first to give the drunken fat man his keys, but he eventually gives in. 
Once there, Peter is ready to finally fight back, but he goes into the garage where Angela is attempting After he saves her, they begin to talk and Angela opens up about how nobody finds her desirable and she's been so desperate for a man's touch that she would go to the lengths that she's gone. Eventually, Peter begins to feel bad for her and disguises himself to sleep with her and hopefully get his job back. Though everything was successful, Angela knew it was Peter all along. Oh, just one more thing before you go. What's that, my dear? See you at work on Monday, Griffin. Huh? Well, not exactly. This episode was only censored slightly, and a few were just for time constraint reasons, but others were definitely a bit too graphic for TV. But stay tuned, because we're about to cover an episode that definitely garnered some controversy. <laughs> We start the episode off with Chris studying for a test and asking his dad for some help. Peter brushes him off and is interrupted by a knock at the door. It turns out to be a shady salesman who's trying to sell some very strange insurance. According to my uncle, who's a real whiz with volcanoes, a volcano is coming this way. Hmm. I too have an uncle. Come in. At first, Peter rejects the offer for not having enough money, but something catches the salesman's eyes. A rainy day fund meant for emergencies sits quietly on the fridge, and of course, Peter doesn't think twice to hand it over, apparently expecting a volcano any day. Meanwhile upstairs, Stewie's in the middle of throwing a tantrum, and as things get heated, he throws Meg's bifocals against the wall, breaking them upon impact. I promise, this isn't the top three Family Guy episodes where a character's glasses gets destroyed. So Lois goes downstairs to use the rainy day fund, only to find out Peter has spent it all on volcano insurance. She scolds him for being a careless and idiotic man, so he in turn rushes to the clam to drink the pain away. Before he can begin sulking, Mr. Giggity himself shows off a wad of cash he earned through his stockbroker, Ian Greenstein. Greenstein? Eh. Cleveland shows off his wealth immediately afterwards and chalks it up to his accountant, Larry Rosenblatt, who helped him get a huge tax return. This in turn leads Peter to the conclusion that in order to solve all of his money issues, he's gonna need a Jew. Peter, not every Jewish person is good with money. Well, yeah, I guess not the retarded ones, but, but why would you even say that? The shock value? Jeez, Cleveland, as edgy and as offensive. Good day, sir. Once home, Peter overhears a conversation Lois is having with her mother regarding the situation, and her mom is more than happy to point out there are much better options than Peter. After this, Peter breaks out into song and dance with his hit single, I Need a Jew. This leads us to our first bit of censorship of the episode when Peter utters the line, Even though they killed my lord. Well, it seems like his wishes were granted, as a Jewish man named Max Weinstein shows up at the family's doorstep with car troubles. I have a Jew. Though after getting his car fixed, Peter insists that he can't leave, which obviously doesn't sit right with Max. A chase ensues, and Peter eventually captures him. For some reason, after Peter explains his troubles, Max decides to help him get his money back from the shady insurance salesman. Though in denial at first of having any of Peter's money, Max finds the cash hidden in plain sight. After returning home with the cash returned, the family decides to invite Max over for dinner. Their relationship with Max seems to be going well, so he decides to invite them to Temple. Though Peter is hesitant at first, he decides to go against his Catholic upbringing and give it a shot. Unfortunately, Peter ends up pooping his pants at the service. Uh Oh! And the family returns home to bid Max a final goodbye. After some thought, after seeing how his life turned out for the worse, he wants his son Chris to have a better shot at life than him. So he obviously does the only sane thing and... I'm gonna make Chris Jewish! What are you talking about? Even after Lois denied that changing Chris's religion would give him a better shot at life, Peter still attempts it by going to a rabbi and seeing how to make it all possible. Once denied the easy route, he decides to make his own easy route and heads to Vegas where Chris can change religions. No questions asked. Back at the Griffin household, Lois begins to wonder where the two are. And after reading a not so convincing note, Brian lets out an incriminating snicker and denies knowing anything about the pair's whereabouts. Lois has no time for games, so she blows a dog whistle, which makes the alcoholic dog talk. She rushes over to Quagmire's house and demands his keys to travel to Vegas. No problem, let me grab my keys. Here they are. As Peter and Chris have taken the family car, Lois speeds over to Vegas to stop the whole thing from happening, and she eventually runs out of gas. So she decides to run quite a distance to stop it. Once there, she bangs on the Jewish glass doors and demands the two put a stop to this, 
using words that can be misconstrued as offensive to the attending Jewish folk. This angers them as a mob forms to attack the Griffin family, and they escape only by the skin of their teeth. Once inside the escape bus, Lois and Peter have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about Peter being a good man just as he is, but it seems they might have gotten on the wrong bus. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. Just because this episode only had one true censor doesn't mean it wasn't controversial. This entire episode was actually banned from airing in its original 2000 broadcast on Fox, and it wouldn't be until 2003 that viewers would get to see this episode aired, which was on Adult Swim and afterwards on DVD. The main reasons for it being banned was the betrayal and stereotypes of Jews. Though this episode in my opinion is very vanilla compared to, you know, I would say season 5 plus Family Guy to be honest with you. But I guess it was just a different time back then. Anyways, let's move on to our final episode, which steamrolls our last two entries. <laughs> We start the episode off with Lois and Peter going to a college reunion. Peter gets a bit upset about the thought of seeing any of Lois's exes, until... If he tries anything while I'm standing here, I'm gonna kick him right in the ball, Gina! Turns out, one of Lois's exes is a woman named Naomi, and she has a favor to ask of Lois, but we'll get into that later. Shortly after, we get to our first cutaway sensor. Oh, there we go. That's not it. It's gonna be... Back at the Griffin household, Peter begins kicking everybody out of the house as he expects Naomi's favor to be X-rated. She just had that one experience in college with that girl Naomi. Naomi's the one who's coming. <laughs> let me stay, let me stay. Lois is clueless to this assumption, however, and Peter himself is surprised to see Naomi show up with her husband. As Lois is showing the two around, Peter still believes they're all gonna be having a wild night and attempts to seduce the group which fails miserably. We cut to the freshly banished family members as they begin to get a bit hungry. Unfortunately, the group is broke, but Stewie has a plan, which leads us to our next sensor. This one is definitely a time constraint sensor. Oh my god, beginner's luck, huh? Start the car, start the Back at the household, the group laugh amongst each other, but Peter's done playing games, and he gets straight to the point. Are we going to get this orgy started, or what? Naomi is shocked at the request, and eventually tells Peter what her favor really is, which is that she is barren and would like to use Lois as a surrogate for her child. We cut to the kitchen, where Lois is given the idea some thought, but Peter forbids the idea, as he hates when Lois is pregnant. And then we get this line. You know what's interesting about Lois's vagina, Brian? Everyone in this room has been in there except for you. You're the only one who doesn't know what it looks like. Lois ultimately decides to go through with the pregnancy and confirms her pregnancy back at home. This upsets Peter to the point where he suggests a way to get rid of the baby. Before an argument ensues, the two are interrupted by Tom Tucker, who has some grim news. Naomi and her husband have been killed in a car accident, leaving Lois pregnant with no logical reason to keep the child. We cut to the next day, where the family is discussing what the best course of action is, and Brian comes up with the idea for Lois to have a after some thinking, she believes this is the best idea and pays the clinic a visit. As Peter heads to the car, he notices anti protesters and wonders what they're up to. The man asks if he has time to watch a short video on the matter, and Peter agrees. Yeah, I got a few minutes. My wife's getting an abortion. Through the graphic imagery and intense message, Peter is convinced that is evil and goes to retrieve his wife to stop. Once back home, the family is shocked to hear about Peter's change of heart and begin to question how he changed his mind so fast. Though, Peter holds firm in his newfound beliefs. Because masturbation is abortion. But abortion helps me get my homework done. And sometimes I abort in my sleep. What am I supposed to do about that? Lois thinks he's completely in the wrong, and it seems the issue is still up in the air if they should keep the child or get rid of it. Would you go down to the orphanage and claim an unwanted baby and take care of it? No, Lois, I'm here to save the unborn. Once they get out of the vagina, they can go fuck themselves. Well, it seems all is well in the Griffin household once more, and Lois goes into a long dialogue about the pains of raising a child and how they need to come together to give this new member of the family a great life. It seems they've decided to keep the baby. We had the abortion. Now this episode has been outright banned from airing on cable and even streaming services to this day. Though not much in this episode itself was censored too much, I think we can all agree that an episode being absolutely banned from any type of airing gets this to the top of our three Family Guy episodes that have been banned or censored. Oh, 
And did you find the three hidden Rogers? Hey, 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 hey,